All right, you're welcome back. Um, <laughs> I think it was during the week I saw a tweet about all of how certain words become catchphrases in Nigeria over time, and the new one these days is restructuring. We seem to hear that a lot. Everybody seems to have a version of it. Some people do not want to hear about it. Some people think we need it. Some people think that's what would actually save Nigeria from all of the drama that's going on right now. And um, we'll, we're going to be talking about that and much more uh, in this segment. I have here with me Jafet Omojua, who's a... Uh, a lot of things. <laughs> I don't even know what to call you. Thanks for being here today. Um, it's been almost two years since you were here. Thanks for coming back. Um, restructuring is, 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 is the new catchphrase now. Um, and it started off, of course, with, with all of the agitations that have been going on in the Southeast, with the call for, for secession, for Biafra to become an independent nation. And then the Northern youths, they say, okay, that they, we, there's a deadline. Uh, for the 1st of October, that all the people from, from the Southeast need to leave before that day or else, like they say in Nigeria, wait till you not carry, you know, sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's not a very funny issue, but I mean, it just gives you an idea that Nigeria is at a point where we should be take, having proper conversations now. What does restructuring even mean, first of all? Let's start with that. Um, first of all, I need to say that this is not the first time we're talking about restructuring. It's just that we're having a different conversation, especially from a negative point, that this thing is about to crumble. But people, including myself, have always talked about restructuring. And restructuring, from my own point of view, from what I have seen in the media, is sort of different from what some people are actually thinking about. They just think about, for, for most people, the sharing formula. For me, restructuring is basically having a truly federal system, a system that devolves power from the center and resides power in the different regions or in the different states. And I totally believe in that. I believe in that because the way Nigeria is structured at the moment, we are in a swim or die together situation. And I don't think that's a good idea. I think the different parts of Nigeria should be able to decide how they want to go, where they want to go to, on certain fronts, maybe not on, for instance, national defense, but on certain fronts like education, on certain fronts like even infrastructure, on power and all this. Like, why should somebody in Abuja decide whether somebody in Adeji or in the far north or somebody somewhere in, in Ogun State has power or not? So these are the things. So when I think about restructuring, it's basically a truly, really and truly Federal Republic of Nigeria, not the Federal Republic of Nigeria that we have on paper. So why is, it, why is it so misunderstood? Because here we don't define the conversation. We go according to the buzz. That's why some people are saying that restructuring came because some of these guys are talking about secession, but that's not the truth. All you need to do to find out the truth is to Google it, and you would find out that there's been a conversation on restructuring since forever. When I, when I, I went for the U.S. IVOP program, IVOP program in August, I really saw American, the American federal system with a very, very different point of view, and I was like, wow. After I came back, I still wrote a story on restructuring, and at that point in time, it still wasn't such a fat conversation. So we don't define the conversation, but really and truly, if, when you take the political interests and all those ulterior motives away from all these Nigerian issues, restructuring basically means to devolve power, to reduce the power from for Abuja and let the states have um, more power, the part basically more or less determine their destinies. And I so, think there's so, nothing bad seeing, that. Seeing the way the, the way our federalism works now, do you think that's something that's ever going to happen? Because politicians enjoy the center. See, one of the beautiful things that have happened with the Biafra conversation is that our politicians are such that they don't move until something dangerous is about to happen. So they don't, they don't get moved by positive things like restructuring will make our country better. They don't care for things. Most of them don't care for things like that. But when they are at the point where they are being threatened, they move. I'll give you, they move. I'll give you an example. This Biafra thing has been going on for such a long time. And I didn't really see prominent leaders from the Southeast really say much until this guy said no elections in the Southeast. Now they're talking. So our politicians don't think of these things and make moves that are about the people generally. But as soon as there is a cost to them, one of the best things we did in this country was the response to Ebola. And that really was because Ebola, more, more often than not, was something that was going to cost the rich. Because Ebola started from Ikoyi. It didn't start from Malagbado or from some largely unknown village in Nigeria. So our politicians are the ones, in my opinion, the people at the helm are often the ones that don't really go in the direction that they ought to go until there is something that's about to cost them their life or their livelihood. Let's, let's, let's move away a little from there and I'll go to the southeast and all of the agitations now. Like you said, it's been going on for a long time. And there are people who think maybe some of their, 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 their issues might be valid. You know, how valid that is? And are you, ex, are you happy with the way the federal government is handling this? No, 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 no not, not at all because... Um, so from what I have seen, the way the federal government is handling it is, you know, calling the elders, trying to talk to them, obviously to go and talk to these people to calm down and everything. But 
if we really want to solve the problems of this country, like restructuring, we need to really go back to the Nigerian constitution. We have big problems with the constitution. And we're not going to solve every problem by gathering people together or giving people amnesty. Because that's, we, we, we like to do this short-termism thing where we just call people together, talk to somebody to talk to somebody, and then things sort of calm down. But we have also seen that these things find a way to come back again. So we need to solve them from the root of the matter. And the root of the matter is the national conversation. And the national co conversation cannot be defined beyond the reality in the Constitution. When we go back to that space, we would have solved quite a number of problems. So I I'm not in support of that. Maybe they would now begin to look at that. Maybe they're just trying to maybe have things calm down now. So if yeah. that is the case, then it is good. Because ultimately, we're not going to solve these problems by calling some privileged people to a table and saying, you guys go and talk to your I, young people. I ask that because, I mean, a lot of people have been very worried at the way the federal government has handled and the Kano in particular. You know, there are bill conditions that he's completely flouted since he's gone out of, since he's been, he's been released. You know, that people believe the federal government is trying to ignore the issue by not necessarily talking about him or to him and that is festering everything is there a way to engage with him see there's a catch and two situation here irrespective of how the federal government moves they will get criticized about it and that's the truth if they ignore this guy they will get criticized for ignoring him if they how a state should actually do if, it, if they go after him they'll get criticized for it so they and the nigerian situation is an abnormal situation so and what do you do in an abnormal situation you think differently from the normal way of handling it so here whatever response they give has to be holistic they have to find a way to to use the carrot sometimes they have to use the stick but there is no straightforward direct answer to this because obviously we have never really been here before we were here it looks like we were here before but the reality of biafra the Biafra war, how it started, is different from the reality today. I mean, for instance, the bulk of their conversation is not about war. The bulk of their conversation is about a referendum. Then we had a war. And I, I've, heard him, I've heard in one or two interviews him saying, this is not a war, this is a conversation. So there's a lot of it that is actually very rational. A lot of what Kanu is saying that is actually very rational. Of course, there's also another part of it that when he's outside the big television platforms, when he's on his Biafra radio, you start to see the real intentions. So from Kanu's side, for instance, I don't see the entire thing as very, very bad. He has, a, he has some very, very strong points that should be discussed. My own fear is that outside of those big spaces, when he gets to Biafra radio, the things you hear about when you go to a Yoruba man's church and all that, stuff you begin to see his real self yeah which is unfortunate i know i know you, we've talked a lot about the, the long-term goals which of course everybody agrees with we need to have a conversation we need to work on the constitution or probably even discard it and have a brand new one but looking at the way things are going it looks like every week there's something even deeper with with, with the issues and we don't know what could be happening in another year or two are there any short-term sort of quick fixes that we can start employing while we start having those proper conversations. See, we've, we've always had quick fixes. I'm, I'm not interested in any quick fixes anymore. We need to have this conversation. See, Nigeria has really got into that. I know we've, we've always been in that situation where it looks like, wow, this is the brink. We're going to drop, and we don't drop. Really and truly, that's unfortunate because somehow people have come to that situation where no matter what happens, they'll say, don't worry, Nigeria will be fine. That looks like a good thing, but it's not a good thing because we really need to, we, we're not going to have in Nigeria a thriving Nigeria in 2020, 30, 2040, 2050, if we don't sit down to talk, that's the truth. Nothing will change fundamentally, irrespective of who we elect in 2019, 23, and if we have those other elections every other four years. Until we discuss the fundamentals of our nationhood, until we discuss the structure, the structure of, our, of our system, the truth of the matter is, look at 99. Between 99 and today, we have not lifted people out of poverty. Altogether, we have not done something, anything extraordinary with democracy. It, it definitely means that something has to be done. So I'm not interested in this short-term thing. I'm interested in real conversations that, that make real change happen. I, I, for, for instance, the president has been away for about 60 days. 